here. Welcome to Wood Library Spotlight on Arthur. I'm Arthur. No, that's not right. I'm Mrs. Ferris, but I'm dressed like Arthur. This is Arthur. He's a character created by Mark Brown, and we're going to have some stories and some crafts and some fun, all based on the books by Arthur. Now, while I'm starting and giving you a little information, you may want to look in your bag that you picked up from the library, because you can see some things that we're going to be working on today. In it, you'll find a pattern for your very own Arthur ears. And you could go ahead and get started on that if you want to while I'm talking. The top part are the ears, and the bottom is the band that you're going to want to put on the back. I found that for my head, because I'm a grown-up, I needed to add a little bit more, and there was some extra paper. So when I cut out my bottom band, I cut it all the way across to the end, and then if I needed to, I could overlap it. But Maybe while we're having our first story, you or your mom or dad or grandma or grandpa or whoever is taking care of you today can cut out those ears and we'll get started. Also inside your bag, you'll see there's an outline for Arthur, two little pink ears, and also some eyeglasses. You'll find a bookmark and a treat because you can't have a spotlight without a treat. So I'm just gonna tuck those aside and talk a little bit about how Arthur came to be. We're all familiar with the books about Arthur. There's over a hundred of them about Arthur and his sister DW and all their friends and the people in Elwood City where they live. But the story about how Arthur actually got started was he was a bedtime story. Mark Brown, the creator, so he writes the stories and he draws the pictures, was telling a bedtime story to his son, Tolan. And Tolan wanted a story about a weird animal. And the first one that Mark Brown could think of was an aardvark. Now, I don't know if that's because aardvark starts with two A's, but that's what he came up with. It was the first animal that could pop into his head. Tolan then decided that a great name for an aardvark would be Arthur. So that's what Mark Brown was thinking when he started doing these. And he wrote and illustrated a children's book about Arthur the Aardvark and the rest is history. So we all have Toland to thank for Arthur. Now the first book that we're going to have is one that looks a little strange. That's not Arthur, at least not as we know him. But that's the original Arthur. When Mark Brown drew the pictures, he made Arthur look like a real aardvark. Let me show you what an aardvark looks like in case you don't know. An aardvark is an African mammal over here that eats termites and ants. It has very sharp hearing, so look at those ears. His earring is so sharp that he can hear insects moving underground. He has a long, long tongue that he can stick right down in an ant hole and <laughs> slurp up some ants. He, his tongue is 12 inches long. Have mom or dad show you a ruler so you can see how long 12 inches is. But 12 inches is really just a little bit longer than a piece of paper. That's 11 inches. So can you imagine if you had a tongue that long? Wow. So let's go back to the original Arthur. He did have a very long nose and he didn't like it. So we're gonna have the first book about Arthur where he's not looking like the Arthur we know today called Arthur's Nose. It was published by Little Brown in 1970. Six. There's Arthur. And this book is dedicated to Tolan. Remember, it was Tolan who asked for a story about a weird animal. This is Arthur's house. And this is Arthur. He's worried about his nose. This is Arthur's mom. 
This is Arthur's dad. And this is Arthur's sister. And they all love Arthur. And they all like his nose. One day, Arthur decided he didn't like his nose. He had a cold and his nose was red. Achoo! His sister thought his nose looked funny. His nose was a nuisance at school. Francine, who sat in front of Arthur, complained to the teacher that Arthur's nose was always bothering her. I want to change my seat, she said. When Arthur played hide and seek, friends always found him first. His nose would stick out. His friends thought his nose was funny, but what could he do about it? He could change his nose. That's what he could do about it. He looks happy, doesn't he? Arthur told his friends that he was going to the rhinologist for a new nose. His friends were very surprised. A rhinologist must be a nose doctor, one who can change the shape. The first part of it looks like rhinoceros. And we know about rhin that a rhinoceros has a great big horn on his nose. Well, Dr. Louise was very helpful. She suggested that Arthur try on pictures of different noses, and that way he could choose the one he liked best. So Arthur tried on all kinds of noses. A chicken nose, a fish nose, a koala bear, a hippopotamus, an elephant, an armadillo, and a toucan. It was going to be a difficult decision. Should he go with a goat nose, a rabbit, a mouse, a zebra, an alligator, or a rhinoceros? Any of those look good to you? Arthur's friends waited outside to see which nose he would choose. Hmm, I wonder what his new nose will look like. Do you think it will look better than mine? I'm going to miss Arthur's old nose. Oh, I can't believe it. It's Arthur. Wow. Maybe he won't want to play with us. And look, Arthur hadn't changed his nose at all. I tried on every nose there was, but I'm just not me without my nose, said Arthur. It's a nice nose. I still want to change my seat in school. There's a lot more to Arthur than his nose. And that's the end. Now, many years later, after that book was first published, they reissued it. Now, they said the 25th anniversary edition, but even this one is pretty old, considering how old you are. But it shows the changes in Arthur. Not only his nose, but here. And then he got glasses. And But his nose was still kind of pointy, but not as pointy. And his face keeps getting rounder and rounder and rounder. And the reason that Mark Brown said that happened is that he found it very hard to draw different expressions on that great long-nosed aardvark. So he made Arthur's face a little more rounded than he could show when he was worried, when he was happy, or all different kinds of emotions. So we can read Arthur better. And by the way, I don't think I mentioned it. Do you know what Arthur's last name is? Read. R. E A D, which is a librarian, I think is a great name. So, have you made your ears? When you get that band, what you can do, and I didn't even mention what else we need for today. You're probably going to need some scissors, and you may have already used them. 
You're also going to want some scotch tape. There's my tape. And you may want a brown crayon. And you can use a glue stick. I didn't put any of those things in your bag because I think most of those are items that you would have around your house already. So we just went with those. But when you get your two pieces, and I'll take mine apart so we can see what it looks like. You're going to have two pieces for your Arthur ear band. So you've got the front part, and then you've got a band. And as I said, I added a little bit on the end of mine to make it so it would fit around my head. But all you're going to do then is take your front and that strip, and you can either use the glue stick, but I think tape probably will hold it a little better for this. And then just tape it in place. First do one side, like that. And then before you put any tape on it, I would bend it around and have somebody Hold it up there and see how tight you need to have it to stay on your head. And then you can tape it together. And then you can look like an aardvark too. another story because we had Arthur with his long long nose but then we also saw that a little while later maybe about four years later another Arthur book came out and it had Arthur wearing glasses and one of the things I really like about the Arthur books is that they are about Arthur and his family and his friends and also about a lot of things that situations that kids go through. Arthur's considered to be in third grade and Mark Brown used a lot of his memories of when he was in third grade, he even used some of the names of his classmates for the characters in his books. But there are stories about Arthur when he gets his glasses. There's Arthur when he goes to camp. There are books about most every holiday and how the Reed family celebrates it. There are is a book about Arthur when he gets a pet. There are books about his sister D.W. There are some books that are written as early readers. So if you're uh, just starting to read or doing short chaptery like books, there are Arthur books and D.W. books about them. There are also uh, chapter books that are all about Arthur. So if you're in third grade, like Arthur is, and I don't know that anybody watching today is, but you might have older brothers or sisters who are in third grade or second grade, and there are chapter books about Arthur and his family, so you might try some of those. So, let's find out about Arthur's eyes. You can see Arthur looks a little bit more like we know, but his nose is still pretty long. And can you see that he and I are dressed alike? We both have gold sweaters and shirts with collars and we both have glasses but I'm not an aardvark. This is Arthur before he got his glasses. He looked fine but he couldn't see very well. Sometimes he got headaches. Do you know why that happens? It's because your eyes are straining to read and focus it makes your head hurt when they can't do it. Arthur had to hold his book so close that his nose got in the way. And he couldn't see the board. Francine had to read for him. She read Arthur the problems. Are you blind? She always asked. Francine got every problem right. Arthur didn't. And no one wanted to play with Arthur. 
Arthur's father and mother took him to the optometrist. That's an eye doctor. Dr. Iris tested Arthur's eyes. You need glasses, said Dr. Iris. Do you see she has some glasses on? So Arthur tried on all kinds of frames. He chose the ones he liked best. You look very handsome in your new glasses, said his father. Everything looks clearer, said Arthur. And his mother told him he looked very smart. But the next morning, Arthur's friends laughed at him. Francine, have you noticed that she's not very nice to him? She called him four eyes. That's because he has his regular eyes and then the two lenses from his glasses to make four in order to see. Sissy, shouted Buster, who was the glass bully. None of Arthur's friends wore glasses. No one in his family wore glasses either and Arthur felt awful. He did not care if he could see. He didn't want to be called four eyes. So Arthur decided he would lose his glasses. Arthur put his shirt in the laundry and in the front pocket were his glasses. His mother found them the next morning. You have to be more careful, Arthur. You're lucky they weren't broken, she said. That day at school, Arthur hid his glasses in his lunchbox. He told his teacher he forgot them. But now things were harder to see than ever. And when Arthur walked down the hall to the boys' room, he had to count the doors. I don't know if you can see what's happening, but he counted the doors. He knew that the boys' room was the third door in the hall. What he didn't realize was somebody had opened the first door to the office. So instead of going office, boys' room, Arthur started counting here. He went, boys' room? And girls, he opened the door. Francine was talking. What was Francine doing in the boys' room? Get out of here, screamed Francine. This is the girls' room. Arthur bumped into the wall. Oh, he couldn't find the door, and now all the girls were screaming. Out in the hall, doors opened. Teachers ran out. The principal appeared. Everyone was looking at Arthur. Arthur turned red, and he wanted to hide. The principal took Arthur into his office. Then Arthur's teacher talked to him. Why don't you keep your glasses in a case in your pocket as I do, he asked. You wear glasses, asked Arthur. Yes, for reading, said his teacher. He took them out and they looked just like Arthur's, brown. And suddenly, Arthur felt much better. He went to his lunchbox and put on his glasses. In gym, Arthur made 10 baskets. Francine only made four. And that afternoon, Arthur didn't need Francine to read the problems on the board. And he got everyone right. Arthur could see Francine's paper. She missed two. After school, Francine asked Arthur to be on her team. I'll consider it, said Arthur. The next morning, Arthur was very surprised when he saw Francine. They're my movie star glasses, she said. But there isn't any glass in them, said Arthur. Oh, it doesn't matter. They help me concentrate and make me look beautiful, Francine said. Well, that afternoon, a photographer took the class picture. Oh, just a minute, said Arthur. And he took out his glasses. He carefully polished them and put them on. Everybody ready, asked the photographer. Wait, said Francine, and she ran to get her purse. She took out her movie star glasses. Okay, I'm ready too, said Francine. Smile, said the photographer. And most of them did. So that's Arthur's eyes. So we've got Arthur now with a smaller nose and his glasses. And they're even, well, 
DW wants glasses too. So what I thought we could have you do is make a game to play at home. You're gonna take your picture of Arthur and cut it out. And then take your two little pink ears and cut them out. A lot of scissor skills here today. I haven't checked with the teachers to find out when scissors should be a skill that you should have mastered. But if this is hard for you to do, it's okay for mom and dad or somebody else to help you, even a big brother or sister. Because remember at one time, they all had trouble with scissors too. Then take your glue stick and glue the pink ears on your face of Arthur. Like that. And then get the other one. And stick that one on. I didn't cut mine out, but you will cut it out. And then you know what you can do? You could stick this on the refrigerator or on your wall, and you've got a whole other sheet of eyeglasses. You can color around the outside of them with your brown crayon if you want to, and then cut them out. And you don't have to cut them real close. We call that fussy cutting, but you don't have to do that. And then stick a piece of tape on the back of each pair of the glasses. And then you can play a game of stick the glasses on Arthur and see who gets them closest to where he needs them in order to read. So let's see. I was gonna talk a little bit about something fun I discovered with the books about Arthur. Um, I've heard Mr. Brown talk about creating these and as I said they came from his son's suggestion um, he uses a lot of people he knows as either models for his characters or he might even use their names now he had a real grandma Thora who read stories to him and she was actually the one who inspired him in his later life uh, to draw so he could thank his grandma Thora, and maybe the way he did it is by including her in the stories. He had a real younger sister. Her name was Kim, but she was the model for DW because he remembered a lot of the things his little sister did. And when his sister goes around the country, she refers to herself as DW in the flesh. Uh, Mr. Rathburn, who is the principal of the school, is modeled after a principal that, well, actually a, an math teacher, seventh grade algebra teacher that he had. And his name was Mr. Rathburn, but in the books, it's Mr. Rathburn. So there are a lot of similarities. And one fun thing, I don't know if you all like I Spy books, but there are some I Spy elements to the Mark Brown books. He does a lot of touring around to visit schools and he honors his children in most all of his books by including their names. Now we saw in that first book that it was dedicated to Tolu, but he does more than that. So let's see if I can find them. This is a book called Arthur's Birthday, and this was published in 1989, so about 13 years after the first book. Um, Mr. Brown and his wife, Laura Brown, I, she has another name of her, maiden name and I can't remember what that is right now. But they have three children, so there's Tolan, there's also another son, Tucker, and there's a daughter, Eliza, and their names are in his books. So let's see where I hid them away. Um, he tries to make a kind of an I spy. He also includes the names of children that he's met at different schools or the name of the schools that he's visited. So. Here we've got 
Br Bryden, that's a f person he knew, met. There's Mill Creek Cookbook, and he went to visit the Mill Creek School. He also visited the Fairwood School. There's Mill Creek again. But right here, there's three pieces of artwork that's on a classroom wall. And this one right here, can you read it? It says, Eliza. And I think it's also funny because over here, also on a piece of artwork, that's his wife's name, Laura. Laurie, excuse me. So what else, where else do we have names? There's another name, Bayport. And I'm assuming maybe some of these other names are for children he knew. There's his son, Tucker. I made a little note so I didn't be spending, wouldn't be spending a lot of time looking for all of these. And let's see, I think there were a couple more. There's Tolan. Take that off of there. But that's in the bush, out at the playground. And there's another school, the Way School. So when you're looking through the later books, after the ones about his nose and his eyes, see if you can find the names of his children and maybe his wife. And you never know, you might even find your own name. So that's a fun game to play with the Mark Brown books. As I said, a lot of the books have uh, themes of situations that children would get into. Arthur was a third grader. His sister was, I think she's probably about four when they started, so probably five or six then. Um, there's a book about when D.W. gets something very, very important, something that you can get when you turn five from Wood Library. You can get your own library card, and this is about D.W.'s library card. And one of the things in your bag was a bookmark that you can color about D.W. with her librarian and says, having fun isn't hard when you've got a library card. And until you're old enough to get your own library card, you can use mom or dad's to borrow all the Arthur books or any books that you want. So if you would like, you can color that in, but you can definitely use it as a bookmark. Another new situation that children, families actually, I'm not going to say just children, uh, have come up is something that I know a lot of people have experienced during this whole time when we haven't been able to go out a lot, we haven't been able to go to school or to restaurants or places like that. A lot of uh, people I know have gotten new pets. They've gotten puppies because they've been home and they can be with the puppy to especially get them settled in. And there's a story about when Arthur gets a new puppy. Isn't he cute? He names his puppy Pow. And it's all about the things that you have to remember when you have a puppy. It's not just all cuddles and snuggles. There are responsibilities. So we're going to have actually a little fun game here. I was trying to think of a flannel board story and it's hard to do it with a character as well known as Arthur. So I hope this isn't too flashy. Um, we're gonna play a game called Pal, Pal, Come Inside because Arthur's pet dog is hiding behind one of the bushes. So Pal, Pal, Come Inside. Behind which bush did you hide? So we have to choose one, don't we? Should we choose the red one? You want us to choose the red one? Okay. Is Pal behind the red bush? Let's take a look. Nobody's there. Pal, Pal, come inside. Behind which bush did you hide? Oh, did I hear somebody say green? Is that your favorite color? Let's take a look and see if Pal's behind the green bush. No, he's not. I had planned for this to be a magnet story, but my magnet cookie sheet is home and I couldn't find another one. So, and this one is aluminum, so no magnets will stick. So we're using some tape. So how many bushes are left? One, two, three. There's a brown one, 
and an orange one and a yellow one. Mm. Pal, pal, come inside. Behind which bush did you hide? Mm. I think I'm going to choose the orange one. Are you behind the orange bush, pal? <gasps> no. So that only leaves two. The yellow bush and the brown bush. Pal, pal, come inside. Behind which bush did you hide? So are we gonna choose the brown bush or the yellow bush? I think I'm gonna choose the brown one because I think he'd wanna be close to Arthur. Are you here, Paul? I guess we know where he is. At least, I hope he's there. Maybe he's already gone inside. Pal, pal, come inside. Behind which bush did you hide? Did you hide behind the yellow bush? I hope so. Oh, there's Pal. Pal, guess what? It's time to go. Inside. There he is. Um, in your bag, you will also have found a little treat. I, as I said, I like to include treats in our uh, Spotlight program bags. So if you want to eat this, we're going to have one more story. And I think it's fun to have a little snack while somebody's reading to me. And in light of what season it is, what's coming up next week, we're going to have a story called Arthur's Perfect Christmas. By the way, all of these books are published by Little Brown and Company. It was three days before Christmas, and Arthur wanted everything to be just right. There would be lots of snow. Oh, we're getting that, aren't we? The perfect tree and a delicious turkey dinner. D.W. could only think about all the presents she wanted. Arthur, she said, help me write to Santa. I want Tina the talking tabby on the top of the list. At school the next day, Muffy was very excited. My big Christmas party is tomorrow, she announced. Muffy, I told you I can't. Francine began, but Muffy wasn't listening. I forgot to invite George, so she ran off. She won't listen, said Francine. Why can't you go, asked Arthur. Every year we have a family Hanukkah party, Francine said, and we light all the candles on the menorah. Well, maybe you should tell her again, Arthur said. Francine shook her head. I've told her a million times. So there are some people who don't celebrate Christmas. They might celebrate something else or not at all. After school, Arthur invited Buster to go shopping. I'm going to bed, said Buster. My mom woke me up too early this morning. She thought it was Christmas. It's happened every year since my parents got divorced. She cooks special pancakes and give me, gives me all my presents, and then I tell her it's not Christmas yet, and she goes back to bed. <laughs> it's weird, Arthur said. She's worried that I won't have a good Christmas without my dad, Buster explained. At the mall, Arthur found the perfect present for Dad. Oh, sorry, we're sold out, the salesman said. How about this olive deep hitter instead? A deep hitter is something that takes the pit out of the olives. Okay, said Arthur. And he found a great present for Mom at another store. Oh, the little glass bird I broke last summer. Oh, this will be perfect. At home, Dad was reading cookbooks. I'm making a real Christmas dinner, said Dad. The kind they might have eaten in Bethlehem at the time Jesus was born. Roast lamb, flatbread, and pulls, hmm, an ancient Roman dish made of chickpeas. Oh, there goes a perfect Christmas dinner, thought Arthur. 
The next day at Muffy's party, everyone was having fun, except Arthur. How can it be a perfect Christmas without snow, he said. Well, said the brain, no one really knows what day Jesus was born. The holiday's in December, probably because that's when the Romans created the winter solstice. I still want snow, said Arthur. Gather near, royal subjects, Muffy announced. I, the princess of Christmas, will now give out your presents. The first one is for Francine Frensky. Muffy looked for Francine. I said, Francine Frensky. Francine wasn't there. She was at home. The dreidel stopped spinning. Gimmel, said Francine. I win again. The phone rang. Francine, it's for you, called her mother. Where are you? Muffy shouted. Muffy, said Francine. I told you I couldn't come because our family Hanukkah party's tonight. But you see your family every day, Muffy said. And besides, Hanukkah's not as important as Christmas. Francine gasped. Oh! <gasps> Well, it is to me, and she hung up. Muffy was so shocked. Buster, wake up, said Arthur. Oh, is it Christmas again, Buster asked. Time for pancakes? <laughs> Maybe you and your mom shouldn't have Christmas, said the brain. It makes you so tired. Buster sighed, but what else can I do? Invent your own holiday, suggested the brain. My family celebrates Kwanzaa. And that was invented for African-Americans by Dr. Maluna Karenga. You, you could celebrate Baxter Day, said Arthur. But Buster wasn't so sure. When he got home, Arthur couldn't believe his eyes. That doesn't look like a Christmas tree, said Arthur. Yes, it does, said D.W. It's beautiful. I wanted something normal, said Arthur, not unicorns and trolls. You can decorate the rest of the tree, said Mom, just the way you want. There goes a perfect Christmas tree, said Arthur. Later, Arthur wrapped all his gifts and put them under the tree. Mom is going to be so surprised, he said. D.W. came in with cookies and milk and a bucket. For Santa, she said. Now, help me fill this pail with water. Water? Arthur asked. For the reindeer, silly, said D.W. Arthur had just climbed into bed when he heard a loud crash outside. Whoops, said a voice. Uncle Fred, I thought you were going to Florida, said Arthur. Well, I thought I'd drop off your presents first, Uncle Fred said. And then my truck just died. Sorry about the fence. Clumsy me. Arthur remembered how Uncle Fred had broken Mom's tea set last Christmas. Well, you're welcome to stay here, said Mom. Rory, too. Arthur heard barks and growls from the living room. Rory and Pale were fighting over Mom's present. Let go of that, shouted Arthur. <gasps> well, the box went flying through the air. Do you remember what he bought his mother? A glass bird. Oh, dear. Arthur made a wild dive and he caught the box before it hit the floor. Whew. He decided to put the gift in a safe place. The next morning, D.W. woke everyone up. Arthur, wake up! It's Christmas! she cried. Mommy! Daddy! It's Christmas! Wake up! Christmas is here! D.W. stopped in the hall. Santa? Oh, it's Uncle Fred, said Arthur. Uncle Fred is Santa? You see what, why he looks like he could be Santa? He's got shaving cream all over his face. Guess what? Mom, said Buster, it's Christmas. Are you sure? She asked. Yes. December 25th, Buster answered. Time for presents? Time for pancakes, said his mother. Muffy counted her presents. 37. The biggest Christmas ever. Oh, wait till Francine hears. And then she remembered they weren't speaking to each other. Muffy opened her new makeup kit and looked in the mirror. I don't really need makeup, but Francine might like it. But Francine wasn't her friend anymore. 
Buffy looked around the room at her new games, puzzles, dolls, train set, and a miniature submarine. Daddy, my gifts aren't fun if I can't share them with Francine. Her father thought for a moment. Let's go for a drive, Muffin. Maybe that'll take your mind off things. Mrs. Baxter watched nervously as Buster opened his first gift. <gasps> Cybercod! exclaimed Buster. Oh, I'm sorry. We, we can return it, said his mother. Why? asked Buster. Oh, you already have it. I just saw it in your room. No, 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 Buster explained. That's Techno Trout. Well, just then Buster smelled smoke. <gasps> the pancakes! He dashed to the kitchen. Oh, they're burnt, said Buster's mother. I'm sorry. It's okay, Mom, said Buster. I kind of like them brown or black. Let's open presents, said D.W. I bet Tina is in this one. Wait, don't start without me. Arthur ran upstairs to get Mom's gift. He reached up into the closet, but he was so excited that crack. Quickly, he opened the box. Oh, no. The glass bird was broken. Arthur felt so sad. Uncle Fred came upstairs to find Arthur. Everybody's waiting. What's wrong? I broke Mom's present, said Arthur. He was the perfect gift and now it's ruined. Oh, that's a shame, said Uncle Fred, but Christmas is more than just presents, you know. Oh, that's what grown-ups always say, said Arthur. Uncle Fred looked at Arthur's gift card. Well, wait, the day's not over yet. Let's go back downstairs. Well, Francine answered the door at her house. Muffy? Muffy took a deep breath. I'm sorry about what I said, but you're my best friend and the party was important to me. Come in, said Francine. I want to explain why Hanukkah is important to me. She showed Muffy the menorah. On the last night of Hanukkah, all my relatives come to our house. And after our potluck dinner, we say prayers together. And then my father lights all the candles. And it really makes me feel like I'm part of something special. I'm so sorry, said Muffy. I should have listened to you. You forgot the best family tradition of all, said Mr. Frensky. What's that? Muffy asked. Going to the movies, Francine answered. Come on. Oh, another Veginator, said Dad. That makes four. D.W. had one present left. I know what this is. She tore off the wrapping paper with one swipe. Oh, it has to be. She ripped the box open. A duck? She looked confused. Oh, not just any duck, said Mom. That duck says 4,000 words. Well, can it say meow, asked D.W.? Well, no, Mom said. Are you upset? No, said D.W., but... I wanted Tina the talking tabby. Oh, Santa, how could you? This is the worst Christmas ever. D.W. stomped around the room and accidentally stepped on the duck. Hello, it said. I'm Quackers the talking duck. D.W. picked up the duck and squeezed it. I love you, it said. Do you love me? Hey, said D.W. You're kind of cute. She squeezed it again. Quack-a-doodle-doo, said the duck. <laughs> D.W. giggled. Arthur wished he had a gift for his mother. Mom, he began, I have something to tell you. Wait, said Uncle Fred. There's one more present, and the card says, To Mom, love Arthur. It does, said Arthur. Oh, Arthur, thank you, said Mom. Oh, it's the tea set that Fred broke last Christmas. Better keep it away from me, joked Uncle Fred. And Arthur didn't know what to say. Wasn't that nice of Uncle Fred to share his gift? At the Pancake Palace, Buster's mother checked her list. 
everything's planned, she said. After this, it's penguins on ice. Mom, Buster began. Then we'll rush home so I can start the roast and make the pudding. Mom? And then we'll watch the TV special and then we'll, Mom? Mrs. Baxter looked up. Yes, dear? Buster took a deep breath. Maybe, maybe Christmas can be a day where we just relax. Relax, said Buster's mother, on Christmas. We could sleep late and eat breakfast and open our presents whenever we want. And at night, we could just sit outside and look at the stars. And we wouldn't even have to call it Christmas. It could be our own holiday, Baxter Day. Buster's mother smiled, Baxter Day. I like that. No, I love it. Everyone at the Reed's house was stuffed except for Arthur. Oh, dinner was great, said Arthur. More halva, please. Arthur, I love this olive de pitter, said Dad. It's so useful. Good news, said Uncle Fred. My truck is fixed, so Rory and I will be going on to Florida after all. Arthur and Uncle Fred went to get his suitcase. The tea set was your present for Mom, wasn't it, said Arthur. Yes, said Uncle Fred, but it was a lot nicer coming from you. Everyone waved goodbye, and as Grandpa Dave backed out of the driveway, he hit the other half of the fence. Oh, dear. It fell over with a crash. Whoops, said Grandpa Dave. Sorry. Mom sighed. <laughs> like father, like son. And later, when Arthur was outside, he was amazed. It's snow! he shouted. Oh, this is a perfect Christmas. Arthur Reed, D.W. yelled. You better come back inside before you catch pneumonia. Do you still like Santa? Arthur asked. He didn't give you what you wanted. Of course, said D.W. He knew I'd like quackers better than Tina. She hugged quackers. Quacky, quacky, doodle, doo. -doo. You love me and I love you. He can say 4,000 words and I want you to hear all of them, said D.W. Oh no, Arthur groaned. A perfect Christmas. And I like it because this is kind of one of those wraparound colors that covers that has stuff on the front and the back that you can enjoy. So that's our celebration of Arthur. So I hope you'll enjoy the things that we made, the games we played, your little snack, and I hope you have a perfect Christmas, whatever that means for you and your family. Thank you, and next month, we'll be having our spotlight program on author, author not an illustrator, Martin Waddell. So we hope we'll see you then. Bye-bye.